I'm here today with a high school football standout, a University of Wisconsin graduate, a second year tight end for the Denver Broncos, and a friend of mine, Mr. Troy Fumagalli. Thank you for joining us, Troy. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know? Troy, for those who don't know, me and you attended the same high school, Wabonzi Valley High School. And we actually met each other at summer camp for basketball. And I thought that we were going to be teammates together. You and a guy by the name of Brian Jefferson were going to be my two big guys, per se. And I thought we were going to run the league. But you later made the decision not to play basketball. And I never got around to asking you why that was. So I figured today would be the perfect day to ask. Why is it that you, you, you left on me like that? <laughs> ah, man, I wish I go back and forth on that. I wish I would have, uh, you know, sometimes I just I think it was a lot, you know, doing you know, all three sports you know I love baseball and I had to give one up um, yeah you know I really wanted to you know if I could do it over again I don't know if I said you know, I don't know if I said <laughs> I made the right decision or not uh, you know but but it is what it is yeah it makes sense you definitely had a good shot though I still remember that left jumper that you had you <laughs> could shoot <laughs> that's all I got yeah, yeah yeah now you know the tough times that we're going through with this pandemic uh, it's forced all of us to adjust in different kind of ways. You actually had your own draft party at home, but for draft guys coming out this year, they had they were forced to have their draft parties at home. How do you yeah. think the NFL handled this situation? And how do you think the stay at home draft turned out overall? You know what, I, I thought it was cool. I really did. Um, first off, I thought the NFL did a good job. Just, you know, I, I thought there was gonna be some tech problems or, you know, bouncing back and forth, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it was cool just kind of seeing everybody, um, you know, at their own home, their loved ones, you know, people that helped me get to that point. Um, mm -hmm. And it was just cool. It was cool to see, you know, everybody, um, you know, say what you want, but like, you know, everybody dressed up in a dress room, you know, in a draft room. Yeah. Um, there was none of that. It was kind of just, just you in your own home and you're kind of with those people that got you there. And, you mm -hmm. know, there's something cool about that, that, you know, that's kind of where, in a sense, it started and that's where you got the news. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Everybody being able to have their family and friends around is definitely a, a strong point in the situation. I think also during this time where there's not much live TV going on, I think having having that draft still happen and then also things like the MJ docuseries that's yeah. going on, I think that's things that lift our spirits during these times. So I definitely enjoyed it for sure. Oh, no. I, I mean, just like you said, that and the MJ doc are uh, <laughs> me saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, Troy, you come from a family full of athletes. Your dad played football at Holy Cross. Your brother Drew played baseball at Dayton, and your other brother Ross played football at Dayton. Can you talk about how having a parent and siblings have helped with your process of development over the course of time? Yeah, um, you know, just from like a simple standpoint, uh, you know, there's always always people to compete with. You know, you got brothers in the house, um, you know, house of all boys. My mom, you know, my mom's the only lady in the house, so. I mean, you compete over everything, you know, you yeah. compete over, you know, waking up in the morning, doing, you know, doing something small to anything, you know, everything's a competition. You're always trying to beat one another. Yeah. Um, so kind of that, that early stage of, of, you know, trying to beat one another in competition really um, instilled to me. And then, um, and then I also saw, you know, uh, I'm lucky enough, they're six and eight years older than me. Um, and even my pops too, just, just, you know, what working hard and what the game did for them, um, you know, just, to the, the relationships they built and you know, the teamwork um, and skills that they developed through the game. Um, you know, that was something I wanted to be a part of. I knew right away um, it was something special and the way they handled it. So um, it was easy, you know, to follow those guys and, and um, you know, and do what they were doing. I always want to make them proud, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so it was easy. Yeah, well, it definitely paid off. Uh, I only have a sister, so I don't really know what that whole brother thing is <laughs> like. But um, – but as you said, it's pretty competitive, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 everything. Almost too much sometimes, but yeah. I mean, I mean, you name it, like stupid stuff. You know, we compete over anything, anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good to know, Troy. Something I remember about you from high school was that you maintained a high level of excellence in the classroom. Now, while playing baseball and football, you were a four-time academic all-conference honoree and a high honor roll student. And later in college, you were a part of the academic All-Big Ten. 
For kids who want to play sports in high school and in college, can you talk about the importance of performing in the classroom? Yeah, I mean, um, at the end of the day, I think, you know, no matter what level you start playing at, um, you know, that's what's most important is your education. And, and, and that's really, um, you know, your foundation of, uh, you know, who you are and what you can do. So I think, I think that's just really important. Um, you know, you don't know when this game can be taken from you. You don't know, um, you know, in any shoe. So it's just always, always good to sharpen the mind and, and um, have something to fall back on in any situation. So um, I always try to do that, stay in the classroom, yeah. I'll get there early, do everything right, uh, just for those instances. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point. I think when I talk to kids uh, who are up and coming, one thing I try to stress is the fact that they need to really pay attention in class just because, like you said, eventually you're not going to be able to play sports for the rest of your life. Bodies are going to break down, we're going to get old, and at some point we're going to have to pick up a new interest of ours. Uh, so I tell them to really take it seriously during that time while also you know, maintaining excellence on the field as well. Um, but it's something that they should really consider. And, and those who, who um, you know, who don't take it seriously, I try to, you know, force it in their minds, hey, this is going to be important later down the road. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, you know, through that, you'll find what, you know, what, what interests you. I think, you know, it, it didn't take, it took me until college to realize what I really wanted to do, uh, did business and finance in college. And it was finally at that point where something clicked and, and you know, it was something I wanted to do, something I fell in love with. And, uh, mm -hmm you know, really enjoyed. So it made it really easy. That's good. Well, speaking of college, in high school, you were a three-star recruit and you were ranked as the 32nd tight end in the class of 2013. Now, when it came to your recruiting process, if I remember correctly, Wisconsin wasn't always on the list or always at the top of your list. Can you talk about what ultimately led to your decision in choosing University of Wisconsin? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, uh, I want to, I love Wisconsin. Um, I took a visit there and, and the thing that did it for me was, was the people. Um, you know, I knew, I knew the football, you know, regardless of, of where I went, football was going to be football. Um, and I, and I really wanted to just develop relationships with people, um, that I've had the rest of my life. And I knew that if I was going to, you know, go somewhere and play something, um, you know, I want good people surrounding me because you know, everything, everything happens off that. And, and so, yeah. um, that ultimately made my decision, but, no, you're right. I didn't, um, you know, Wisconsin, they recruited me. They didn't recruit me heavy. Um, you know, as you know, I, I, I walked on there, but um, mm -hmm. it was something I just believed in myself and that was something I wanted to do. That's good. And like you just said, you mentioned that you were a walk-on and you had no guarantees to make an impact on the field right away. But uh, following your redshirt year, you had 187 yards on 14 catches, which caught the coach's eyes and later led to you earning a scholarship in your 2015 season. Uh, I want to kind of ask you a three-part question about your redshirt year. Uh, first being, what did a normal day look like for you in being a redshirt? First off, you know, the redshirt, the redshirt years are tough. Um, you know, you know, you know, you're not on the field, um, you know, and there's not, you know, you're not getting ready for a game. There's not that instant, like, you know, I'm getting ready for this, getting ready for that. It's, it's yeah. truly, you know, what you make the most of it. And um, mm -hmm. that's something that I, you know, I think that really shaped uh, my career, you know, in college and pros. But, um, you know, those days aren't easy. You know, you wake yeah. up wake up, uh, practice in the morning, or sorry, weightlifts, weightlifting in the morning, you get up and, and uh, you know, they know you're not playing the game, so they don't take it easy on you. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll have you, they'll have you doing, uh, you know, heavy sets like off-season work. Mm -hmm. um, so we do that in the morning, and then class all day, and then practice all night. Um, so probably like class from 8 to 1, 8 to 2, probably an hour mm -hmm. break in there, and then get over to the facility uh, practice and then in practice you're basically on the scout team so you know you're yeah. giving looks for you know if we're playing Wisconsin versus Michigan you know you're you're playing as the Michigan tight end so mm -hmm. you're you're out there you're trying to give the starting defense the best look um you're really grinding trying to uh help those guys out so um I just you know I took it every day just just try to do the best I could um you know just just try to hone my craft and and, and realize that, um, you know, this wasn't going to be forever. Eventually, it was going to be my time. So um, I just try to do the best I can, get as strong as I can, big as I can. And yeah. um, obviously, you know, school uh, during the day was most important. So yeah. just try to stay up all, all those things. You know, try not to – I think the biggest thing during that time was just take it day by day, you know. Don't try to look at the big picture like, oh, you know, next week I'm going to be doing you know, the same thing over. I'm not going to be playing the game. 
just taking it day by day, finding those small victories, and uh, you know, eventually it'll help you out. It definitely sounds like something that could be a mental challenge. Uh, and although, you know, you strive to have as, as many good days as you can, there has to be days where there are some struggles or some frustrations that come with being a red shirt. Can you talk about some of those? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. You know, it's, it's no way easy. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're basically, you know, a freshman. You got your shirt tucked in. Um, you know, you got those freshman rules. Where you can't yeah. you can only walk in certain places, the locker room. You know, you got your shirt tucked in, things like that. Yeah. Um, and it isn't easy, you know. Um, for most of us, we go from being, you know, the star on your high school. You know, you know how it's like. You, you go from yeah. the star on your high school, you start, you know, you're, you're used to, uh, you know, walking in and not being on easy street, but, um, you know, making all these plays and doing this, and then you're really yeah. at ground zero again. So it did take, you know, a lot of mental toughness, a lot of me mental uh, preparation. Uh, lucky for me, you know, I had a uh, good support system around me that, I believed in myself and I knew that um, this would only be temporary, mm -hmm. but you know, it's tough. A lot of guys struggle with it um, and things like that. So it wasn't easy. And like you said, you came out on top. How would you say going through that red shirt year, how did it ultimately prepare you for the seasons ahead? Um, you know, it's exactly, you know, you give what you give. So, or you get what you give. Sorry. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I just, I just try to get as big, strong as I could, um, you know, try to be a sponge, learn as much as I can. Yeah. Um, so that, that's kind of what I did. I went from, I think I was like 215 when I came in. And the biggest thing was for me was, was a lot of physical development. Mm -hmm. I think I, I got up to 245 almost. You know, it wasn't the best looking 245, but. Uh, <laughs> but you got there. I to, yeah, I knew <laughs> if I wanted to play in the Big Ten, I had to put on some weight. So that was yeah. the biggest battle for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that as best I could. And, and. You know, just try to try to do you know as much as I could. You know, at the time I was, I was so young, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, just try to just try to be around the right people at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, you definitely explain um, the definition of a red shirt pretty well for people that don't know. And I have to say, going into Santa Clara uh, with my freshman class, uh, there was four of us, and two of them got red shirted, and. Uh, it was just tough sometimes to see everything they had to yeah. go through, all of the extra work behind the scenes that people don't know about. And it's a big mental aspect, like you said, because they're coming in every day and practicing just like us, but they know they're not going to suit up for the games. So they have to somehow say in their mind and, and play tricks with their mind saying, all right, even though I know I'm not playing, I yeah. somehow need to still find a way to continue to get better and not really let this defeat me. I need to know that I'm getting better during this year and I'm going to be ready for the seasons ahead. So uh, I commend you for that. And for those who are listening, they now know what, what it takes uh, to get through your redshirt year. Exactly, yeah. Troy, you're, you're a special player, and I say that because of the fact that at Wisconsin, you started off as a role player, but you later emerged into a, a supreme player, a top dog for, for Wisconsin. Uh, both of those roles require a certain responsibility. Can you talk about the responsibility that each one of them require? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. They're, they're completely different. They really are. Um, you know, as a role player, it, it's not, um, you know, it took me a while to get used to. You know, you're, you only play 14 plays of the game, and, and you know so much of the game is, is feel. You go out there, you get comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hard as a role player. You only get, um, so there's about 80 offensive, you know, 70, 80 offensive snaps yeah. um, a game for each team. And, you know, you only play 10, 15 percent of them. So um, as a role player, you don't get in any groove. You kind of got to go out there and make the most of it. Um, so it, it does take it's a little more, you know, not on the field work. It's a little more classroom work really out of my career. It's one thing I try to take with me is, is um, you know, you're not going to get as many reps as a starter. You're not going to get as many reps as the guys that are in there a lot. So you really got to be honed in in the classroom. So when you get your opportunity, um, <clears throat> You know, they understand that you can do it and uh, you're getting better at the same time. You know, you're not out there wasting a rep. So, um, yeah, just kind of I think the biggest thing was was get more mental reps than physical. And when you go out there, you don't give it your all, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just 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 go out there, fly around. Uh, you know, don't be scared. Yeah, exactly. 18 year old kid. Oh, 18 year old kid. And, uh, That's uh, tough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was tough. And then. What else was tough is, like you said, the big transition from a role player um, to a starter 
physically it was it was, it was tough at first um, just because I was never used to you know you go from being used to 10 to 15 plays out there and yeah. you're expected to perform at a high level you know like I said 70 80 plays a game um, it wasn't easy it was a lot of physical work um, on my body you know especially mm-hmm. at Wisconsin the tight end position yeah you're expected to, to run a lot and you're expected to block big guys a lot so mm-hmm. It took me a while physically um, just to get my body conditioned for it. And then, um, and then, and then once again, it, it was something that, you know, once you master the, the role player craft, it's not like you just jump right into the master and the starting craft, you know, you yeah. kind of got to start at ground zero again. Um, you know, you're not going to win every play. There's going to be plays where people across from you, you know, they beat you, you know, this and that. So um, it took a while, you know, mentally too, just, just to kind of, kind of go out there and know that you're not going to win every play, just throw it in, give it your all and uh, things like that. So they're both way different roles and both, um, you know, took a way different approach. Yeah. I think I've played both as well too. And I, I mean, that's why me and you are so similar in a way, because, you know, we've gone through sports at many different levels and uh, honestly, although it takes a lot of responsibility to be the top dog because you're counted on to go out there every night and to perform and, and, uh, to lift up your teammates. I think being a role player uh, takes a lot more mentally. Um, I had to go through that in the G League because when I first started in the NBA G League, it's like I, I was a role player, so I have to come in during my certain minutes throughout the game. And since I'm only given those few minutes, I have to go in and perform the best I can in those few minutes. You can't use an excuse like, oh, well, I didn't get the whole game to warm up like everybody else. No, you have to go in there prove that you can do what you can with those minutes. And then that's ultimately how uh, you emerge into a role as being a top dog. And I think that's what I went through with the G League. And that's how I got to where I am at this point. And I, you know, think that's how you got to where you were as well. Exactly. It's, yeah. Like you said, it's, it's, it's tough, but you know, you only have such a small window to be mm-hmm. evaluated on, but you know, it is what it is. Now, Troy, one thing I want everyone to know about you is that you're a very humble person And I know you don't speak about your accomplishments much, and that's why I'm going to do it for you and give you a shout out. In your last season at Wisconsin, you were a John Mackey Award finalist, a second team All-America, a Qualit Clark Big Ten tight end of the year award. And I want to add that you earned the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic Offensive Most Valuable Player. Now, besides the fact that you're really good, which we already know, can you talk about what it's like to reminisce on those awards that you've earned? Um, You know, it's really humbling just um like you said just just seeing those people um and the way i say that is is i i looked up to so many of those people that won them before me especially the the big 10 tight end award Mm -hmm. um and that was kind of my goal coming in you know freshman year uh, to win those awards to um even you know more so the team ones win the cotton bowl win the orange bowl um so those are things that are really special to me those are stuff that i'll take with me um you know for the rest of my life and, and and so forth and and the reason is because it's, it's all, you know, as a testament to what I did there and the hard work, um, you know, that's something I truly believe from day one is, is what you put in is what you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Um, and, and nothing's guaranteed, you know, all that work's just going to give you a chance, a chance to, you know, to, to make something happen. And um, oh, that was something that, that, uh, you know, eventually you know, I'll, I'll hang around and, and tell my kids about one day, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's funny. I don't know what that said. Um, you know, when, right when you get up, you know, right when those accomplishments, you're done with them, um, you know, they only mean more and more every day. So, yeah. you know, when I'm, now they, they mean a little bit, but um, you know, I think 20, 30 years from now when I'm telling my kids or, you know, older than that, telling my grandkids, um, that'll be something that, that'll mean even more. So, Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing about awards. I feel, I feel like they resonate with athletes more when our time is over with, our, our, yeah. our athletic time is done with. I want to transition into your professional career. Um, We know that when it comes to the draft combine process that scouts are really focused in uh, and they're looking for any weakness that they can find. Now, uh, when you were a few days after you were born, you actually had to have your left index finger amputated. Uh, Was this a problem for you when you played football and how were you able to compensate for that moving forward? Um, You know what, it wasn't for me just because it was something I was born with and it was something I was used to my whole life. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm lucky it could have been a lot worse. There's so many people that you hear mm-hmm. about, you know, losing their hand, losing their arm, but yeah. you know, I, was, I was really blessed that I ended up only, only losing my fingers. So mm-hmm. um, it's something that, 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 you know, I was, I've known, ever known since I was born. So 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it didn't really stop me, and, and um, you know, it's, it's everything I know. So um, I almost use it used his advantage. Um, yeah. I thought it helped me out playing baseball growing up. Um, football didn't really make an impact. But, um, no, you know what? When I was getting drafted, not a lot of people said much. Um, mm. A few would be like, hey, you know, can I see your finger? Stuff like that. No one no yeah. one really had any concerns for it, which I thought was pretty cool. But yeah. I, thought, I thought, you know, I thought for sure people were going to give me crap yeah. and be like, hey, I, you know, like this is – issue and stuff like that yeah. a lot of people um you know just kind of said hey that's cool that you can do it like that um you know i noticed it doesn't affect you and you know, things like that so um yeah it hasn't really been it's just kind of part of my story who i am but yeah. uh, you know lucky enough it hasn't affected me in any way yeah well i definitely know it hasn't slowed you down but i, I wanted to ask you because you set such a good example for young athletes uh and never letting anything to get in the way of their dreams so uh you definitely exemplify that you were drafted by the Broncos shortly after having surgery. Um, you had a sports hernia injury, and you ended up coming back from it after missing uh, mini camp and OTAs. Uh, but when you came back, you actually re-aggravated that same injury, and that sidelined you for the rest of your rookie season. Can you talk about uh, how that affected you and the pressures that you were under during that time? Yeah, you know, it was, it was a tough period for me, especially um, you know, coming off. And, and I'm going to kind of go, um, I'm going to compare it to, you know, high school to college and then college to pros. Um, you know, in a similar sense, you're, you're so used to being the man and, and making plays and being out there and, and uh, doing all this thing. And then same thing, you know, college and NFL, you kind of go back from ground zero again, starting over. And, um, you know, I really wanted to go out there and compete. And, and the fact that I couldn't right away because of the sports hernia, um, it was tough for me at first. It took a little mm -hmm. while. Um, but lucky enough, I've been through that situation with the red shirt that, um, you know, you're not going to be out there. You're not going to be making plays, but it's not the end of the world. You, you know, you could, you could find a positive out of it. Um, you know, you could go in there. You can learn a bunch in the classroom still. You could get bigger, faster, stronger. So I kind of – I was lucky enough to, to kind of go through the red shirt in college that kind of took that approach going through the pros uh, my, my rookie year. And, and um, you know, I'm lucky enough the Broncos kept me around. Um, let me develop still with that injury. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it wasn't easy, but mm -hmm. um, it was something I'm thankful they let me do. And, and during that time, I, I tried to make the most of it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's definitely a theme of yours to continue to prevail. That's one thing that I'm realizing through all the situations that you've been in. And you definitely prevailed because you ended up recording your first touchdown against the Minnesota Vikings. Freeman is back there, blocked by Leary, caught for the touchdown! A two-yard laser, Fumangali, from the University of Wisconsin. Can you talk about what that feeling was like for you, and did you have any family members or friends in attendance for that game? I did. That's That was the coolest part about it, is um, mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of being back home in the Midwest, um, yeah. you know, playing the Vikings, a team that, as a Bears fan, I grew up watching. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole family was there and, and just kind of recording that first one. Um, it was actually our, one of our starting tight ends, Jeff Hireman got hurt. So mm. um, I kind of had a bigger role that week and, and I wanted to make yeah. an impact and do all I could. So um, it was special, you know, it was kind of one of those things that I think I'll reflect back on and, and you know, all the, all the things I've been through in my career, especially rookie year, that was tough. That was, that was kind of one of those milestones, um, yeah. you know, throughout that, that, uh, you know, that kind of make it all worth it that you kind of forget about all that you've been through and mm -hmm. you're kind of out there and you, you feel like your old self you're, you're out there playing the game again yeah making plays and, and just having fun and, and you don't really worry about the rest so mm -hmm. you know, it was a really cool moment unfortunately we lost we almost won uh, yeah <laughs> we uh we lost by i think like four came down to the very very wire we had the ball on the two uh, and um you know that, that would have made it a little better but uh no it was cool just it's kind of that moment that, especially since my family was there and they've been with me my whole career, and, and uh, love to see that. that. That's probably the coolest part about it. Well, that's great. Uh, I want you to know that even though all of us weren't there, uh, we all support you from back at home, and, and you know we stay in touch with everything that's going on. We know when you score touchdowns. We know when you're on the TV. People text each other. We pass it around. Say, oh, did you see Troy on TV? So we're definitely rooting from you at home at all times, man. And you talk about that being a special moment. 
uh, another special moment was actually captured that season uh, when you played the Green Bay Packers. You actually uh, were caught in a picture with Aaron Rodgers as you were walking off the field at Lambeau Field. Can you talk about what you guys were talking about and can you talk <laughs> about what that feeling was like to, uh, to realize the moment when you first picked up a football as a little kid to now being on the same field as Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, you know, um, like you said, it's crazy. And, and it's, you know, and, and I think one day it'll hit me. It really hasn't hit me yet. But one day I'll look back on it and be like, you know, that was, that was, that was crazy that that happened. And, you know, I grew up watching these guys and I'm out there with them. And so, um, you know, that's, that, that's really cool. But um, yeah, just, he came up to me after the game. I was walking off. We lost. Um, and he totally caught me off guard. I was walking, uh, you know, to get in the <laughs> locker room. He yeah. came, grabbed me, tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, like, what's up, man? Just wanted to say, because he always comes to Madison games. He's very supportive of the okay. University of Wisconsin. Um, he's telling me on the show, he's like, I just want to say, you know, like, appreciate everything you did for the state. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, best of luck going forward. So it was cool, you know, mm -hmm. it was someone that, um, you know, such a good dude and, and uh, has done so much for that state. And, uh, you know, kind of go up to you and say, what's up? I was kind of shocked at the time. I was like, wait, what? You know? yeah. <laughs> and that's no, big time. Cool. Because it was, you know, he didn't have to do that, you know, so it, it was really yeah. cool of him to do. And, um, and yeah, and he got on camera, too, was a picture of it. So. Oh, that was perfect. It was, it was a great picture, man. I remember seeing the picture. I was going crazy, man. And, uh, you know, I, I was wondering what the backstory was to that, because I know he he's a California guy with me being out there in California. I know he's he's yeah. from out there. Uh, so I was like, you know, maybe just from him being in Wisconsin for so long, maybe he went to a lot of the Wisconsin football games. So that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, he always goes to the hoops games. He's a big okay, hoops fan. Yeah. Okay, got you, got you. <laughs> well, there's a lot of young athletes out there that look up to you. Uh, what is some advice that you can give them if they're trying to follow in your footsteps? Um, I think just, you know, just, just, just work hard. I think it's very cliche, but yeah. really, you know, that, that's one thing that, that if I look at my career and everything I've been through is, is you, you know, you truly get what you get from, the, from, from any situation in life is, you know, whatever car you're dealt, whatever, whatever it might be, um, just work your hardest. Um, I think for me, that's, that's the one thing that, that, you know, resonated is, is that you don't know what, you know, you can't control so many things, but what you can control is just your work ethic and the attitude you bring every day. And um, if you do that, you know, I, I promise it's going to be okay. No matter what your situation is, I think, I think, you know, there's always a plan for it. So just control what you can and work hard and um, everything else will kind of fall into place. Yeah, for sure. I think in playing sports, it's funny that you say that. I think control what you can control is one of the big time lessons that I've learned. And I think another one is become comfortable being uncomfortable. And yeah. I think, as you know, we're placed That's in so many one. situations. We're placed in so many situations where we as players uh, are not used to being in the predicament that we're in. Because uh, like you said, in high school, we're always the star player. Uh, but to finally join everybody who's a star player and, and, and start from a different role, I think that makes us uncomfortable. But the more you can be comfortable in that situation, the better off you'll be in the long run. Yeah, I mean, I mean like you said, it's always easier said than done. I mean, it's not easy to be, yeah. mm -hmm. you, know, on the, you know, being comfortable with, with things. Um, yeah. But, you know, like you said, you just got to stick with it and <clears throat> try to do the best. Yeah. Now – I've talked about how great you are on the field, but I have to commend you for your willingness to give back, uh, especially during this time. I understand that you teamed up with the owner and chef of a restaurant called Naples 15, which is located right there in Madison, Wisconsin. And you guys actually provided dinners for the Ronald McDonald house families throughout the month of April. Can you talk about how this came about? Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of just sitting at that home at home during the time and, and not much mm -hmm. to do. Um, you know, I kind of wanted to make an impact. And, and one of the first people I thought of was um, his name Sal, mm -hmm. uh, who owns a restaurant in Wisconsin called Naples 15. Sal is actually from Italy, you know, wow. you know, very good guy, awesome guy, broken English. You know, he goes back mm -hmm. there. He's here eight months out of the year, goes to Italy four months. So, um, and I know he's got family back there. So mm -hmm. I knew, you know, with everything going on with COVID in Italy, it was something dear to his heart. So, um you know, something I want to make an impact. I know sell. So. Um, and it's kind of like a mom and pop smaller shop. It's not something that you really Uber Eats or anything like that. So yeah, um, 
it was it was kind of easy for me to get back with him. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought the easiest way for him to do it is is by cooking. You know, that's what he's best at. So um, I thought, what can I do? And I reached out to the Ronald McDonald House in uh, mm-hmm. in Madison, who's also, you know, at this time was struggling through some things. So um, I basically got it set up where, you know, I would pay for some meals, um, basically for, you know, meals for two, twice a week for a couple months. Mm-hmm. And um, and he would, uh, he would deliver those meals to the Ronald McDonald Foundation. Wow. Um, and, and feed those people, you know, so kind of not only give the Ronald McDonald House people, um, you know, a, a hot meal, but also give sale um, some business. So it was easy yeah. for me. And then obviously with my connection to Madison, um, it, was, it was a town that, uh, you know, I owe a lot to. So. Yeah. Well, you've definitely made an impact both on and off the field in Madison, Wisconsin. And I might have to Next time I'm in Wisconsin, I might have to visit Sal and, and, oh, and try yeah. some of his food. Because as you know, I spent my first season in Italy uh, playing overseas. So, you know, I know a lot about the Italian culture and the Italian food. So mm-hmm. for a guy that you said is from Italy and spends half the year in Italy, I'll have to go try his food because that might be the best Italian food that I get now that I'm not actually in it in, in Italy. You got to go. I'm telling you, he gets everything from over there. He ships it all oh, okay. in. So it's well, like, that's perfect. I haven't been to Italy, so I can't, you know, you can't know really, more you can't than really, I do, yeah. but... Yeah, but I think I think this is close as we get. So, oh yeah, for sure, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> now you have to give us your best or funniest welcome to the league rookie moment. Man, I know everybody has one, so I know you have to have <laughs> something to give us. <laughs> funniest, so you know, there wasn't uh, there wasn't like one one. Or, I was trying to think of like a play where I was out there, like you know, going against Von Miller and. and kind of blew me up and, and there was a few times like that but there wasn't one that stuck out but I'll give you the funniest is yeah. um funniest uh you know coming as rookie we had to you know you had to do the rookie talent show so we um uh, so I went up there with one of my other teammates we uh yeah we were nervous as heck during uh during camp right you got a million things going through your mind during camp <laughs> next thing you know these, these people throw you up on stage in front of the whole team and uh we had to, we had to attempt to sing the Backstreet Boys, mm. um, wow. you know, like, and and it was just bad. We were getting booed at, or you know, people were throwing stuff at us. Ended up having to go back up there like four days later. But um, you know, that that's something I'll never forget. We went up there. We, we had to do at the Backstreet Boys, um, yeah. and and actually like one of our mics. So he had a mic and I had a mic, and like one of them was like fifty percent in and out. Uh, <laughs> It was just bad. It was it was something that that when you when you're done, you're like, Ooh, man, I'm glad I got never do that again. So. Glad it's over. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that people really don't know about rookie seasons is the fact that as rookies, we're just now entering the professional ranks, and we're so worried about making sure we know this play, making sure we're on time to this practice, doing everything right. And then on the side, we got the veterans telling us we have to sing or dance or we have to worry that they're putting popcorn in our cars or things of that nature. It's like things you're not really trying to be bothered with, but you know you kind of have to go through it. (laughs) No, you just got to embrace it. You know, like it is what it is. Just got to embrace it. It is what it is. That's that's funny, man. I like that. (laughs) Let me end with this before we hop into our rapid fire questions. Uh, What is one of the greatest lessons you've learned and how has it helped you moving forward? I know you gave us a few, but if there was one that was greater than that, that you usually abide by, uh, let us know. Um, I, I think just, I think the two that, um, you know, that, that resonated with me, I already kind of brought them both up is, mm-hmm. is you know, um, you know, you get what you give in this life. That's the biggest, um, you know, how much work you put in. I, I truly believe um, that's where you're going to get out of it. So, you know, whatever you yeah. put in and then, the other thing I really believe is, uh, is, you know, everything happens for a reason. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is you're going through adversity, whatever it is, just fight through it because um, it is it is part of a bigger picture. It is part of a bigger plan. And, um, you know, you might not realize it at the time, but I guarantee you that in some way, shape, or how, it'll make you a better person and you get something bigger out of it. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, adversity is a, is, a, is a big thing to mention. I think it's good for, for young kids to know growing up uh, when you're going to hit a brick wall at some point. When you hit that brick wall, you're going to stay down or you're going to get back up. And uh, ultimately, I think you guys like me and, and many other people in the world, we choose to get back up and, and continue moving forward. Yeah. 100%. All right. 
I want to hop into these rapid fire <laughs> questions. I'll ask All you a right. few and then just shout out your answer, man. All right. Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Golf or bike? Golf. Country or rap? Rap. Favorite Chicago restaurant? Gibson's. Tough one. Gibson's. That's a good one. Favorite vacation spot? San Diego. I saw that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> and last one, favorite city to travel to for road games? Ooh, road games? Yeah, I mean, probably the Rams, L.A. L.A. Yeah. All right, good. I was thinking, I was going to say, it's either got to be like Chicago because everybody, all his friends are there and everything, or it's got to be L.A. just because everybody yeah. goes to L.A. <laughs> All right. Well, that's Troy Fumagalli. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time with us, Troy. We really appreciate it. I appreciate it, Jerry, as always. That's a wrap for this episode of JB and Company. Just like Troy, let's all continue to find ways to help people throughout these unfortunate times. Spread the love and stay safe. We'll see you next time.